for Asia's hotel industry has been navigating headwinds amid higher borrowing costs, lingering inflation and uncertainty in the global economy. The sector's strong rebound from the pandemic has yet to translate into investment volumes. According to JRL Research, hotel transactions in Asia-Pacific hit $10 billion last year. That's lower than in 2022. So as industry players adapt to higher for longer rates, new business models have been opening the sector to a larger pool of capital sources, such as condo hotels. Now, the hybrid properties are comprised of individually owned condo units that operate like hotels. It is a more flexible asset, which allows developers to tap into more funding to build and offers buyers a vacation property plus an income stream. A Filipino brand, Hotel 101 Global, is hoping to make strides using this business model from their headquarters in Singapore. It's a subsidiary of Manila-listed firm Double Dragon, as of the country's fourth biggest mall developer, which is held by Jollibee founder Tony Tan Kak Chiong and real estate businessman Edgar Sia. A Hotel 101 Global is now set to be the first Filipino company to list in the U.S. The Nasdaq listing will be done through a SPAC merger with JV SPAC Acquisition Corp. As Sarah Kaldi spoke to 101 CEO Hannah Yula Lucini about the upcoming listing and their expansion plans. And we pride ourselves being the first global hotel chain in the value segment with literally one type of rooms. When it comes to your NASDAQ listing, do you have a timeline in mind? No, we're very, very excited to list in the NASDAQ. Um, you know, Hotel 101 will be the first uh, Filipino brand to list in the NASDAQ. And so we, we are very excited to do this by the second half of this year. Uh, why go overseas? So why go to the US? So we pride ourselves as really being a hospitality platform that is tech driven. Um, and having this global expansion plan in place and having already started with uh, Niseko Japan, Madrid, Spain, Los Angeles, USA, we believe now is the time uh, to do that and the NASDAQ being the natural home for technology stocks is really uh, the place that we want to be given our aspirations to grow rapidly um, across the world. And where would you use the funds raised? So it's an asset light business model because we make money twice. We make money first from the selling of the units um, and this recoups the capital during the construction stage, um, which allows us to redeploy this much faster than most hotel developers. And secondly, we make money from the operations of the hotel. And so we've initially uh, targeted uh, 25 countries that we want to be in. Uh, four of which we are already in, so 21 more. So these um, initial uh, target countries are really dependent on the availability of prime land because we always have to build our hotels from the ground up. So it's very important for us to have the right location and also the scale in that location to be able to build a 500 room hotel. Yeah. For Niseko, for example, Niseko has traditionally been a um, uh, luxury market. Yes. Um, so Hotel 101 is very interesting for global investors in Niseko because it's actually the largest value segment hotel um, in Niseko and it's in Hirafu which is very central. It, it suddenly opens up you know a whole new world of tourism that would be able to get value for their money when they go to Niseko. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's a very exciting pro uh, project for us especially since they're building a bullet train direct from Tokyo. You know, Niseko is really unique because in the last seven years, if you track condominium prices in Niseko, it's actually quadrupled in the last seven years. And so with this catalyst of the bullet train coming from Tokyo, people are really looking at Niseko um, to be more of a capital appreciation, appreciation play. You've got big plans. You're looking at one million rooms up from the 2,000 that you have currently and you talked about you know, getting revenue from two sides, the selling units and managing them but you know, they could, this could also open up you know two sets of risks for you uh, capital availability of capital for example and travel demand as well how do you plan to manage these risks so we see ourselves as a disruptor in an industry that is ripe for disruption the opportunity that we really see globally today is that of the lack of standardization in the three-star hotel segment Standardization exists in almost every value segment in the world. Like take, for example, the um, budget airline industry. 
all the airline companies in the budget airline industry essentially sell one product the economy seat. They change the seat cover, but the product is the same. But if you close your eyes today and you thought about what is one the standard hotel room in the three, in the value segment, that that room doesn't exist. And so we see that as an opportunity, which is why we believe listing um, in the Nasdaq this year is, is really the way forward because it will allow us to access you know, capital markets that would really, uh, you know, really um, fuel the rapid expansion plan that we have um, for the world. Capital, one thing, um, but what about travel demand? What gives you the confidence that now is the time to scale up this quickly? I think you know tourism numbers globally. Uh, you know the the rebound in travel. Niseko alone, I think you know just talking to people on the ground, they say they're like at least 30% higher than pre-COVID. It's an amazing rebound, and I, I just see this as continuing to grow. Uh, people, you know, continue to want to travel. They continue to want to have experiences, and and we see this in the rise in hotel room rates. No matter where you go, uh, rise in you know tickets when you when you travel. I mean, it's it's unbelievable, and I think it's it's just continue it's just going to continue to grow. What was your biggest lesson from the pandemic? You know, that's really what cemented our conviction to go globally. Our prototype um, in 2021, which is the peak of the pandemic, as you know, the Philippines had several lockdowns um, that we had to endure, and you know, we never closed the hotel. The unit owners continued to get you know sufficient yields um, that they were happy with as in comparison to people who had many condominiums for example that remained vacant during the pandemic um, our occupancy was extremely high we were able to shift you know uh, during the hard lockdowns to more corporate accounts then you know that it was the quarantine I guess from tourists to business travelers um, so in fact, our highest occupancy, I think, to date was still in 2021. And so that, what, that's what really cemented, you know, our conviction that we had something truly special. If it could thrive, you know, you know, in the midst of like several turns of lockdowns, a global pandemic, if it could continue to deliver yields to its investors, it continued to operate, continued to be profitable, um, then we knew we had something special.